Dear learners, I am Dr. Prashant Gautam and today we shall be studying about the role of public organization in tourism. Dear readers, after studying this unit, uh, we will be in a position to have an understanding about the developmental role of uh, marketing in tourism, to know the role played by the public organizations in this regard and uh, will familiarize you people with the role played by the Department of Tourism, Government of India in giving a suitable directions to the developmental role of tourism marketing. Dear readers, the growth of the tourism industry and the impact of tourism on the economy of a country, region or locality have been widely acknowledged. Every organization, whether public or private, in some way or another are involved in the process of marketing. Practically every country in the world today has a national tourism board. You may ask why this is so? Well, tourism plays an important role in the economic growth of the world and has been found to be the sole revenue generating activities for some governments. In the case of India, it is assumed that about 16 million people are directly or indirectly employed in tourism sector. Keeping in view the global projections for tourism and the potential existing in tourism, there is further scope for accelerated growth of the tourism industry. A crucial aspect to be taken into note is that the developmental role of marketing so as to emphasize not only the consumer but also the needs and the wants of the local communities and the host population at the destinations. Dear learners, in this unit we shall examine the role of developmental marketing in relation to tourism. The role of these organization and the, specifically the Department of Tourism in this whole process. Let's understand the developmental role of this tourism marketing. When we look at the Indian tourist as a part of the global tourism market, we observe many problems such as how to reduce the price of tourism to and from India, distinguish our product from those of our neighbor regions, compete with other destinations, increase the number of international tourist arrivals to India like we are targeting to make it constantly above 1% of the global market, promote the domestic tourism, increase our foreign exchange and generation of income and employment via tourism will ensure that will maximize the benefits and minimize the negative impacts of this tourism. Dear learners, tourism is a very complex activity that requires experience and understanding of both global and national complexities, similarities and differences. To understand the developmental role of marketing, we have to understand that marketing helps to increase consumption or access resources, goods and services which are seen as a measure of development. We also have contextualized tourism within what is happening in India and the world today to define the developmental role of tourism itself. Therefore, first let us define developmental marketing. All of you may be familiar with the advertisement on like family planning, literacy, and uh, anti-drug campaign on television and in print media also. This involved a message to be put out at a prime time on Doordarshan or television network where there are a maximum number of viewers or in the newspaper and magazines. Such campaigns are and advertising do not earn any revenue. You may ask why they are being carried out. Well, they have a bearing on the overall development of the country. For example, a rising population can put additional pressure on the country's resources to justify family planning campaigns. In fact, what is being marketed here is a set of ideas aimed at enhancing the society's interest and welfare. Mostly such marketing is done by non-profit making organization. And in such situations, according to uh, Philip Kotler, the concepts of product, price, promotion and profit sector marketers have to be redefined for maximum relevance to all organizations. Hence, he advocates that the concept of profit maximization 
must be translated into benefit cost maximization so that marketing model can be applied fruitfully in non-profit sector. You may have noted that the programs like Survi are promoting tourism by the prizes that are given to those who answer correctly. These, there are reports of tourism festivals at new tourism destinations around the country. There are programs and newspaper reports that promote destination through travelogues. There are discussion based programs that give us insight on the strengths and weaknesses of the Indian tourism, both domestic and international. We celebrate World Tourism Day on September of 27th. We declare India uh, like maybe visit India here or give special incentive to tourists who come to India. Generally, we hold travel marts and participate in travel trade fairs. We have a national action plan for tourism also, etc. etc. All these events and techniques have a common objective. And what's that objective? Is to promote tourism in India and within the country also as a developmental activity. Because tourism is one of the world's leading industry and we wish to become a global player in world tourism. Therefore, tourism is seen as a model for development, overcoming foreign exchange crisis and maintaining the balance of payment problem, generate employment and income, develop the infrastructure and human resources, redress regional imbalances through a transfer of income and investment, transfer wealth from the rich nations to the developing nations. With these objectives in mind, India has embarked on the path of tourism development with a target of maybe 25 million tourists by the year 2022 to earn a good amount of money in foreign exchange. Marketing tourism is therefore a developmental activity with all our socio-political economic structure combined. In order to achieve the target and to bridge the developmental gap, there are many bodies organization which are involved in the process of the policy formulation specifically for the tourism in the country and each of these organization they aim at framing successful and effective tourism policy or tourism related plans for the development and expansion of tourism across all part regions of the country these policies are framed for the benefit of the residents of the country with the vision to develop tourism as a major source of for the overall benefits both socio-cultural and economic. Following are some of the organization bodies which are related with the tourism policy formulation. The first of this is Ministry of Tourism, Government of India. The Ministry of Tourism, Government of India is the principal organization involved in the creation of policies and programs and also looks after for the coordination of actions of different central government organizations, state government, duties and the private sector organization for the expansion and publicity of tourism in this country. This ministry is led by the Union Minister of State or sometimes independent charge for the tourism and culture. Director General of the Tourism has a field foundation of 20 offices throughout the country and 14 offices outside India specifically for the marketing and one subordinate workplace project, for example, Indian Institute of Skiing and Mountaining, Gulmag, as a winter sports project. The foreign offices are mainly liable for tourism, advertising and promotion in their particular areas. And the field offices are liable for the delivering info facility to tourists traveling around the country and to look after the growth of field projects. The action of IASN, GWSP, have now been renewed and different ski and other development programs are being organized and conducted throughout the Jammu Kashmir Valley. Second body is Planning Commission. Tourism development in India began quite late with the first tourism policy being declared by the government of India as late as in the year November 1982. Tourism was known as an industry by the Planning Commission of India in the year June 1982. In the year July 1986, the Planning Commission of India established the National Committee on Tourism with the aim to frame plans for the tourism sector. The government's plans of integrating a planned tourism sector in India 
moved an extended way in increasing Indian tourism. In the year May 1992, the National Action Plan for Tourism was declared. And in this plan, the main goals were like this, to develop the budget group domestic tourism, to grow the tourist reasons both economically and socially, conservation of the national heritage and the environment of the country to encourage the movement of foreign tourists in the country, to progress India's share in the world tourism, to accelerate chances for giving job opportunity in specifically in tourism sector. There is one more body which is known as the National Developmental Council. The National Development Council was established in the year 1952 in the month of August. It is also known as Rashtri Vikash Parishad. NDC is a head body for decision making and planning on the growth and development matters in the country. The main role of the body is to strengthen and mobilize the resources and efforts of the nation in support of planning and also focuses on promotion of common economic policies in all important stages. Also ensures and keep a check on the rapid and balanced growth and expansion in all the parts regions of the country. The National Developmental Council also makes sure in the process of Indian growth and planning it provides chances to both the union ministers and the chief ministers of the states to discuss on the different strategies at important stages of their policy making. The policies and plans are finally sanctioned or approved at their gathering meetings after the accomplishment and before they are finally presented in the parliament and the state legislatures. There is one more body which is known as Interstate Council. The Interstate Council is an Indian constitutional organization set up on the basis of provisions of in Article 263 of the Constitution of India. The organization was established by a presidential order dated on 20th May 1990 on suggestions of Sarkaria Commission. The council is designed for discussing or examining policies, subjects of common interest and disputes among us the different states of the country. Article 263 of the Indian constitutions offer for formation of Interstate Council. It is not a permanent organization. It can be formed at any time if it shows to the president that the public interest would be functioned by the formation of such a type of council. Yet, with increasing gap among the centers and the state, dear readers. Now, and national economies have been adversely affected. In many economies also, a state of emergency continues to dog the growth cycle. The problems of the growth cycle are equally reflected in the tourism activity. Tourism at the national level is primarily the responsibility of the government of the country. The functions to be performed in this regard, they also include like formation of uh, the national tourism policy, transforming this policy into a plan of action, defining the status of tourism in relation to the national economy, facilitating administrative arrangements, demarketing the role of private and public sectors, coordinating the activities of all those concerned with tourism, 
promoting the country as a destination in the tourism generating markets etc it must be noted that the national tourism organizations these popularly known as ntos the development of tourism does not sell a tourism product but at the same time it is actively engaged in the marketing of the tourism products famous author burkert and medlick they attributed two major objectives to its marketing efforts one was creating knowledge about the country in tourism generating markets in order to persuade the tourist to visit its country and second is it seeks to create an identifiable image of the country's tourist attractions subsuming to some extent the diversity of attractions within one country into a single coherent image thus the ntos they provide a marketing umbrella under which the individual producer of the tourism products and services they market their own components of the tourism product in fact the nto paves a way for tour operators airlines hotels etc to market their individual products to prospective buyers in the market that is already aware of or predisposed towards the destination these effort they include uh, promotion campaigns fan trips market research etc tour operators airlines travel agents hotels etc to join these as they are beneficial for them thus the role of the ministry is seen as one of the research promotion policy making and human resource development authors bucket and medlick they again say, say that the tourism organization they provide the framework in which tourism operates and its purpose is to maximize the opportunity offered by tourism to the destinations in india it is the department of tourism which as a body implements the policy of the ministry this is done through the process of planning and allocation of budget for tourism between the different heads functioning under its jurisdiction and also by performing a regulatory role it is also responsible for promotion and information another important function of the tourist organization is to access the stage of tourism development in a country the india tourism development corporation and state tourism development corporations or local tourism projects like delhi heart they also play the role of catalyst or pioneers in accommodation catering hrd and destination development however unlike the national tourism organization they are profit making or commercial public organizations at the same time they are the path finders as they bring developmental resources to area that are rich in tourist attractions but with poor infrastructure and superstructures example of this are hotels at beach resorts hill stations and backward regions transportations special promotional schemes to raise the number of arrivals etc etc dear readers if we make an assessment of these things we can say that the public organization in the field of tourism has grown in power and responsibility because tourism development is seen as an important tool for economic progress at the time of independence india did not have an infrastructure services or human resources to satisfy tourists domestic tourists were just beginning to move with initiatives like ltc and hometown travel concession private companies followed the lead of the government and came matching travel allowances domestic tourists were also facilitated by holiday homes and public accommodations facilities it was an international tourist who needed world class transportation accommodation food water etc since the 1960s the public and private sector organization have been targeting such tourists apart from poor infrastructure some other negative factors like a maze of bureaucratic regulations um shortage of funds for publicity and inadequate professional staff the tourism scenario in india is therefore marked by an absence of positive factor dear learners let's have a look at the other side of the coin what is the perception of people in india and at tourist destinations are they willing participants in such development 
tourism is not like old time hospitality. Tourism development has taken a place over the heads of the local people, often at their cost, and they have lost control over their resources or benefits of the tourism. This is because the argument of confronting to market forces empower the tourist and the big business operator. This is in line with the basic principle of marketing, produce what sells. Local people have to adapt to tourism and this is perhaps why in India there is hardly any tourism awareness. The local people do not know how to intervene in the tourism debate. Finally, we come to the issue of the failure of public organization in mobilizing people for tourism and the positive image of India as a destination. The two issues are quite interrelated. Although most marketing experts would not look at it in this way. Freedom and autonomy are the fundamental attributes of democratic policy and tourism development should not rob the local population of autonomous decision making. Moreover, business standards Business interest should not override concern about the living conditions of the people at the destinations. Therefore, public organization should not play a role subservient to business interests, whether local, national or international. Simply because the resident population is poor, illiterate and unfamiliar with tourism and its impact, the information role of the public organization therefore become critical as well as their role in HRD. So that the tourism professional has a stake in developing sustainable destination not only for tourists but also for future generations of residents. Dear learners, let's sum up this today's discussion. Tourism is a developmental activity and the role of public organization is not only to help in marketing the destinations, but to help in improving the product, infrastructure, awareness, market search, etc. In India,